In my last video, I showed that you could make a $20 network attached storage using an Orange Pi Zero LTS. But what about the newer Zero Two? For $10 more at about the cost of $26, you get a much more capable setup. And just like in my last video, I will be connecting a Samsung Evo SSD connected over USB as a media source so we can see general performance. The Orange Pi Zero Two is sporting an all winner H616 quad core 53 CPU and it's no slouch and it supports the ARM64 instruction set. It has an HDMI port, which I haven't tested and may never test, a Type-C charging port, which is awesome, gigabit ethernet, great, and much more powerful Wi-Fi chipset supporting AC and Bluetooth 5. I ordered my version with one gigabyte of RAM, which is plenty, and thankfully it still has that wonderful USB pinout, which is something I wish the Raspberry Pis came with as standard. The hat system would be forever changed. However, it's still only USB 2.0, and it is a bottleneck for our gigabit ethernet, which I'll show shortly. Let's test out that gigabit ethernet connection with iPer 3. As you can see, there are no problems saturating that connection. Next, let's download a one gigabyte test file over USB 2 by way of a Samsung Evo SSD using Nginx as a web server. As you can see, it hovers around 30 megabytes per second, which is about 240 megabits per second, which is almost three times what we got on the original Orange Pi Zero. However, USB 2.0 has a theoretical upper limit of 400 megabits per second, which we'll never get to. However, as you can see, it does peak around 40 or more megabytes per second, which is really impressive. That's at least 320 megabits per second. Next up is setting up a Windows share by way of Samba. Let's download first. It hovers between 25 to 30 megabytes per second, which is a little more than double what we got on the original Pi Zero. We'll do the same thing in reverse by writing to the SSD over Samba. It hovers between 20 to 25 megabytes per second, which again is about two to three times what we got on the original Pi Zero. As for media streaming, let's check out 100 megabits with Kodi and HTTP protocol. No problems here, buffer is way ahead. If it looks choppy to you, it's just the way that I record my screen. I assure you, it's super smooth. No playback issues. So I go through 120 and then 140 megabits per second, 160 and then 180. Now, 200 is special because it looks like it's not keeping up, but in fact, it is. If you let it play long enough, the buffer is able to get way ahead. And as for 250 megabits per second, well, that's just not happening. 200 megabits per second is super impressive. That's more than double the performance of the original Orange Pi Zero. As you notice, we are bottlenecked by the universal serial bus, aka USB. I kept wondering what the fastest interface was on the board, and that would be the RAM. So I created an empty RAM drive using about 500 megabytes or so and mounted that so it could be shared over Samba. So let's write almost 500 megabytes to this RAM drive over Samba and see what happens. Wow, that's impressive. We're writing to the RAM at a speed of about 111 megabytes per second, or about 888 megabits. And then we'll do the opposite and read from that RAM drive. Surprisingly, it was slower, just under 100 megabytes per second to read it, but still impressive nonetheless. And just to clarify, these are the speeds you should be getting on a normal desktop computer on a gigabit network. To answer a question from my last video, yes, 
the Orange Pi Zero 2 can run Jellyfin, but I could only get it running by way of Docker. But yes, it works, and I'll show you how that performs. I have HTOP running on the other side to show you the performance. Because of the way I'm capturing my desktop, the video might seem choppy. I assure you, it's not. It's smooth, and everything works fine. Well, everything except transcoding. I added an H.265 clip, however it does not play, and the Orange Pi Zero 2 will stay maxed out for a few minutes. So if you do decide to go this route, either disable transcoding and enable the integrated EXO player, not the web player, or just make sure your media is all H.264. I'm surprised how taxing Jellyfin is on the system, but it's impressive that the whole system uses under 400 megabytes of RAM, and as you can see, it runs fine. So there you have it, the Orange Pi Zero 2. It's quite capable for the price. It doesn't get overly hot. It can be had for about 25 or so dollars. It's available all the time, unlike the Raspberry Pi 4, which I would still like to thoroughly test out. It's an interesting little single board computer that I would gladly run every day as part of my personal setup. Sure, it doesn't have USB 3, but it can handle streaming beautifully. And not to mention, all the ports are on one side, so you can easily put it into a case. I hope this video inspired you, and I appreciate you spending your time with me. Please comment down below, I really would like to hear from all of you. And thank you so much.